Hey house guests, welcome to today's Celebrity Big Brother 2 updates and spoilers. Our house guests of the day, J Squad. We got Jeremy Strain, JJ Muscatel, John D. Dominici, and John Shawan. Thank you guys so much for the support. We couldn't do this without you, and we think you're awesome. And um, yeah, if you guys want to be house guests of the day, check out our Patreon link in the info box below. So Sorry this video is like yeah, the length of a Shane Dawson video and probably only like half as entertaining but like <laughs> there's been some crazy stuff happening in the house and my brain is mush right now just from trying to process everything and bear with me. Okay so when we left off yesterday the house guests were waiting for the power veto ceremony and Tom was waiting for Natalie to come and talk to him about what she was going to do with the power of veto. It's not going to happen. Uh, Natalie is now part of a group that Joey has rallied together because Joey decided he's actually going to play the game <laughs> and uh, her the plan is for Natalie to leave nominations the same and then she, Lolo, Tamar, and Ricky have all agreed to vote out Candy which means Joey will stay and get to potentially play another day if he chooses to do so. So then uh, one of them, they want one of them to win HOH, break up Tom and Kato next. It's going to be crazy, guys. It's going to be crazy. So Tom, on the other hand, is thinking, you know what? If Natalie doesn't use the veto, it's not so bad because it's less blood on my hands and we'll just get rid of Joey like I was originally planning at the beginning of the week. <laughs> no. Okay. So then it was time for the power veto ceremony. And as planned, Natalie did not use the POV, which means Joey and Candy remain up on the block, and the eviction is Saturday. Okay, so apparently Natalie said in her speech that she's respecting the HOH's decision, and Tom did not like that. Uh, he told Cato that he thought it was passive-aggressive because she never even went and talked to him about it, but you didn't talk to her either. I mean, <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say your alliance is dead, right? I think so. I think team fun is team finished, team F you, which we will see in a bit. It got really ugly, but we'll get there. So Tom is like, oh, maybe we should openly break up the alliance right now in front of everybody. Oh my god. Kato says, no, that's just a knee jerk reaction. We're not doing that. So anyway, Ricky was talking to Lolo and Natalie, and he's like, all right. I'm going to talk to the guys and I'm going to act like I'm all confused and pretend that I still thought the plan was to put up Tamar because he doesn't want them to know at this point that he knows they wanted to backdoor him this week. So Ricky goes to the Chrysler bedroom to talk to Tom and Kato and Ricky's like, whoa, did the plan change? I thought we were going to put up Tamar to see if she had the power. What? Ricky is the worst actor ever. He's so bad. So Tom's like, oh, we have honestly have no idea what's going on. And Tom and Kato say the girls didn't talk to them all day. So it's kind of weird, right? They're supposed to be in an alliance. So Ricky's like, Tamar has the power, which is true. But this has not been confirmed for anyone in the house yet. So Ricky's saying, we had a golden opportunity to get rid of it. What's going on? Did you guys change the plan? Oh my god, he is freaking... Just, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Trolling. He is trolling them right now. Not just trolling, trolling. <laughs> so Tom and Kato are like, no, we didn't change the plan. Uh, it seems like the girls have been hiding from us all day and they're acting really weird. So Ricky says, well, if we're going to be a group, we all have to get on the same page. Did you guys make an effort to talk to the girls? Tom, you're the HOH. You're like the boss of the group this week. And Tom and Kato are like, yeah, we tried to talk to them, blah, blah, blah. So then Ricky's like, all right, well, what are we going to do now? And they're like, I don't know. We got to talk about it. So Tom asks Ricky, who do you want to vote off this week? And Ricky says, you know, I think I would like to vote out Candy because she's pretty tight with Tamar. Joey doesn't have any allies. And Tom's like, okay, that's interesting because the girls were saying earlier in the week that they really wanted Joey out. So we're going to all have to talk about it and see if we can come to an agreement here. So then Natalie and Lolo come in just as this talk is breaking up and they decide, you know what, <coughs> excuse me, 
we are going to have our meeting up in the HOH room because it's going to look better for TV, says Tom. So we're all going to trickle up there and see you in a few. Okay, so before this team fun meeting, Ricky is talking to the, the girls and he's giving them some tips. He's like, Natalie, you're going to need to say that you were waiting for Tom and Kato to talk to you about the veto. Lolo, I really want you to play up that you weren't feeling well earlier and that's why you couldn't talk. Which I guess she was feeling sick still from the last competition where they were like spinning during the power veto. So meanwhile, Tom and Kato are up in the HOH room and they are also scheming and trying to figure out how they're going to act at this meeting. So Tom says, we're going to listen, we're going to agree with everything they say, we're going to let Ricky be in charge, and we're going to be apologetic. Okay, so Tom also says, like, Ricky was definitely acting down there, right? And Kato's like, oh, hell yeah, and they agree. He is not good at it. They were not wrong. Okay, so then the meeting begins in the HOH room, and it starts without Ricky, but he joins a few minutes into it. So the girls start saying their lines, playing their parts. Natalie comes in hot. She's like, I was waiting for you guys to come talk to me. I was waiting in the kitchen. You never said what we were doing. I didn't know what to do. Who would I have even taken off? So then Lola's like, yeah, I'll take some of the blame for this because I usually bring everyone together, but I was sick in my room all day. <laughs> Sorry. So then Tom is like, Natalie, you won the veto. I'm not going to tell you what to do with it. And Lola's saying, but we needed your brains. You guys are so smart. You always think of all the angles. Ah. So she's really like laying it on thick here. So then Ricky comes in and he's saying, we need to trust each other. The alliance is shit if there is no communication. Well, let me tell you, it is a giant steaming pile right now, <laughs> okay? And uh, Natalie says, the plan changed so many times over this week. Uh, we were never on the same page. She didn't know what they wanted her to do, so she just went back to the original plan, which was to leave the nominations the same so that Joey could go. All right, so then they're talking about what should happen next, and Ricky, Natalie, and Lolo are all saying that they want Candy out because, like Ricky was saying before, Joey doesn't have allies, and Candy is tight with Tamar. So Kato's like, yeah, but Joey is a lot more capable of winning competitions than Candy would be. And they're like, no, it's fine. Like, Joey doesn't have anyone. It doesn't matter. Which is a little bit sus. So Tom is like, it's fine. We have time to decide. And I'm really okay with either person going. He says, it's completely inconsequential. I don't think so. I think there will be consequences. But <laughs> after the meeting, Tom and Kato are talking. And they agree. They just watched a performance and they're, uh, they're like the Academy Award goes to and then they decide no this is the freaking Razzies that was not Academy Award worthy so each person had their own little story that they stuck to and Cater's like Cater Cater's like they're liars Cater <laughs> and again they're not wrong I mean both sides I feel are at fault here um so then Tom brings up again publicly ending the alliance and he's like, oh yeah, I've seen on this show before, they like have this thing where they bang pots and pans, maybe we should do that. And we could be all like, duh, 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 duh. he did that. <laughs> Can't we put that to bed? Like, do we really need to see that again? So Kato says he doesn't want to do anything like that until they have a backup plan, which is probably a wise decision, right? So they figure out that uh, Natalie, Lolo, and Ricky probably have already talked to Joey because the girls were very against keeping Joey earlier in the week. They were convinced that he would put them up if he were to stay and win HOH. Now all of a sudden they're saying that they want him around? That's like a dead giveaway that you've made a deal with this person when you flip like that. So they're like, well, they probably told him that they'll save him if uh, he works with them, which is true. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's why they kept saying that Joey has no one, because it's actually like the exact opposite. Bingo! So Kato is saying, all right, well, moving forward, we should say that we want Joey out this week, and if the others push back, then we'll know that they definitely made a deal, because that is freaking fishy. So then Tom and Kato talk again later, and they're realizing, whoa, we are on the outs with pretty much everyone now, except for Dina Lohan. <laughs> Kato can just feel it. The energy has changed. 
Joey is is like a lot closer with everybody now. He's getting along with everyone, so it's just it's weird. It's weird. He can feel like the iciness towards them too. So Tom decides to invite everyone to a party in the HOH room. He's got a cheese plate, he's got fruit, he's got Oreos. He made it nice. He's got all the cups waiting there. Dorinda Medley style. Um, so eventually everybody goes up because Big Brother decided to give them two bottles of wine. So when they heard that there was the wine upstairs, they're like, okay, we'll go. And honestly, it seemed like everyone was having a good time just hanging out, passing around Tom's music. Uh, talking about like TV shows and stuff and there was even this magical moment when Tamar said that the biggest thing that she's grateful for out of this whole thing is her relationship with Candy. Oh, it's so nice to see them getting along. So they hug, Candy says, you know, same thing for her and Natalie's like, wow, I'm really glad that you guys mended your relationship because it's made the whole house a lot better just sweet because when one thing is fixed another thing will break um so then this is so joey he showed up late to the party because he had to take care of a hangnail <laughs> oh my god i can't i can't do it <sighs> okay so the party ended up breaking up just around 10 p.m lasted over an hour i think that's pretty good right that's pretty good for big brother i mean bb can i feel like those parties could go on for hours but this is Celebrity Big Brother, okay? They don't have bottle service here, so it's not gonna last that long. But then, woo, after the party, things started getting crazy. Tom and Joey were chatting up in the HOH room, and this conversation was already planned out by Tom and Kato ahead of time. So they decided it is now time to let Joey know some, some details here. So Joey, oh, sorry, I have to do this, okay. <laughs> it's better than wiping it on my, my, my sweater, right? So, <laughs> Joey, uh, I'm sorry. Joey starts off the conversation saying, like, this really can't cut into my shower time. <laughs> he was, like, killing it last night. Oh, my God. I can't stand when Joey complains, but, like, when he's doing his weird Joey quirks, it's pretty funny to watch. Okay, so, anyway, Tom was like, I want to tell you why I put you on the block and what's going on right now. So he's like, I never intended for you to go home. Just please keep this to yourself. And Joey's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I will. I will. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And blah, 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 blah. So then Tom reveals that he and Kato formed an alliance with Lolo and Natalie Eva Marie. And Joey's like, oh, yeah, I'm assuming like to knock out Jonathan and Ryan because they're such great players and my best friends and the best. And <laughs> Tom is like, well, sort of like I didn't want to knock out Ryan. I wanted to knock out Ricky. And since I didn't get him last week, I also wanted to backdoor him this week. And Joey's like, what? So <laughs> why didn't Natalie use the veto? And obviously we know. The Joey knows all of this stuff. He had his whole Bible study undercover meeting with the girls the other day. Like, he freaking knows. So, Tom is like, well, the girls double-crossed me, and they didn't talk to me before the power veto ceremony, so, like, can't trust them anymore. So then he's telling Joey um, that the girls were so nervous about him earlier in the week, and they thought that he was going to target them, and now it's like, what's going on here? So, um... Tom is saying he wanted Ricky out, not just because he thought maybe he had the power, but also because he's just a really strong player, he's really smart, and he knew about the four-person alliance, and he was kind of like grouped into it because he knew about it. That whole thing was a mess. But he says that Ricky has a side alliance with the girls, and he really wants to break that up. So um, Tom is also saying that he thinks the power is going to come into play during the eviction. Just keep in mind, they still don't know exactly what the power does and how it works. Tamar is the only person that knows. So they're like coming up with all these crazy theories about like being able to use it on other people and like how long it's gonna last and all that good stuff. So Joey is like, you know what? If I do end up going, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna watch the Super Bowl with my kids. Like it's fine, it's fine. So, <laughs> okay Joey. So then Kato comes in during this conversation 
and interrupts and he's like, um, excuse me, sir. No, he doesn't say that, but he's like, excuse me. Um, Dina is with Ricky right now by the hot tub and she's like opening up about everything and saying that she doesn't trust the girls and like all the stuff is coming out. She's telling her secrets. So guys, Dina is freaking lit. Oh my God. I don't know how much of the wine that she had at the freaking party, but like she was messy. So I also want you to know, she was wearing this like bright yellow jacket and a freaking pink cowgirl hat. She, it was a look, it was a look. So I don't think she was even talking game with Ricky at that point, but Kato was very paranoid about it because he feels like he's got a pretty good hold on Dina. And now that he's seeing her talking to Ricky, he's getting nervous. So Kato and Tom talk to Joey a little bit more and then eventually Kato goes down to the hot tub slash pool and calls Dina away from Ricky. He's like, Lohan, come here! So <laughs> eventually he's able to get her to go over by the fire pit and their mics were off at first during this conversation. I'm hoping that they will show this on the show um, because we didn't get to hear what he was saying at first but we saw a lot of like, <sighs> like he was angry at her and like chastising her like, you don't do that. So he's telling her, don't give Ricky any information, and he's telling her, you need to go to the train room, meaning like the lounge train car room thing. So as they're like breaking up this conversation, Dina's saying something about Candy. She's like, Candy is the biggest, I'm never going to be friends with her. So Kato is like, All right, just go in the train room. So <laughs> go to bed, wig. So then <laughs> Kato uh, tells Tom like, whoa, Ricky is trying to pull Dina in. We need to make sure that this is not gonna happen. So then Kato and Tom go to the train room to wait for Dina because she's like, I have to pee. So she's taking a really long time and they're just like, what is going on here? They want to tell her all of the information that they just shared with Joey about their alliance with Natalie and Lolo and about how they wanted to get rid of Ricky and blah, blah, blah. Cause they want to bring Dina into the fold. They've kind of been like giving her as little information as possible so far. And now they want to like really bring her into things. But Tom is like, maybe we shouldn't give Dina all this information right now because she's a little <gasps> tired. <laughs> the Hollywood word for drunk off her ass. So meanwhile, <clears throat> Dina goes back outside with Ricky, oh my god, and now she is kind of spilling some game stuff and it is not good, oh my god. She says to Ricky, you're against me, that's what I'm hearing, and Ricky's like, what? They're just saying that to make sure that you don't vote to save me, like if I'm up on the block, and they're going to try to turn you against me. And Dina's like, they're going to turn me on me. <laughs> And she says, they're going to turn on me eventually. The girls are going to kick me out. So Dina starts talking about Kato's girlfriend. I think it's pretty clear that she's like into Kato. And I think that Kato might have some feelings for her too. But like, whatever. He's got a girlfriend. But I think Dina is like really upset about that whole situation. How Kato is like flirting with her all the time. It's inappropriate. It's very inappropriate. So Ricky is like, yeah, he sucks, right? But like Joey... He's been nice to you though, right? So <laughs> he's trying to warm her up to the idea of Joey being around. Cause she was also saying like, Candy just, ugh, she's awful to me, she sucks. So Dina's like, oh, Joey, he's been an angel. So <laughs> then she was also saying some weird stuff about how like, she's way too deep for her brain. And <laughs> she says she's not sleeping at all tonight. Woo! Alright, so eventually <clears throat> she leaves because she knows that Kato and Tom are waiting for her. She's got to get to her daddy's. So <laughs> eventually Kato pulls Dina into the lounge when he sees her like come in from the backyard. And he's like, alright, you know what? I'm not going to tell you anything until the morning. Like, I can't talk to you about this right now. And Dina's like, no! I'm ready now or never. You never tell me anything! So... <laughs> Kato is getting really frustrated with drunk Dina. He's like, I told you that you can only trust me and Tom, and I see you out there talking to Ricky, spilling secrets. It's not okay. 
I can't share this info with you right now. And Dina keeps demanding the info. She's like, it's now or never, mister. And she's he's like, no, I'll tell you tomorrow. She says, tomorrow's over. <laughs> oh my god. That is just like one of my favorite lines right now. Just, tomorrow's over. So Kato does end up revealing because she's insisting. He tells her that he had an alliance with Tom, Natalie, and Lolo. And he's trying to tell her the information now. He's getting pissed because she keeps interrupting him with, like, nonsense. And Dina's like, oh, the girls are lying except for me. Which is not true. But anyway, Kato's telling her, you're protected. I've told you, you just need to trust me and Tom because we've got your back. And you got to stay away from Ricky because Ricky can get in your head. So eventually, um, Candy comes in the room because she wants to send out some tweets, okay? She wants to get her tweets on. So she's like, am I interrupting something here? And they're like, no, stay. So Dina, she's not done yet. She turns to Candy and she's like, can I ask you something? Did you say to anyone that you would vote me off if I was on the block? And Candy's like, um... No. <laughs> when you voted for me, and then Dina's like, I, I told you you were safe. She cuts her off. And Candy's like, I never said that I would vote you off. And Dina just keeps talking over her. She's like, you went to the other side. And Candy's like, what are you even talking about? Honestly, like, side note, it was so confusing to follow this conversation and try to make any sense of it. Because Dina, I feel like, was playing a completely different game than everybody else and I feel like we're all losing or maybe we're all winning I don't know but it was very confusing to follow and I don't think Candy was even understanding what Dina was trying to say so they start raising their voices Dina again is talking a lot of nonsense and Candy's like wait a second how are you trying to turn this around on me when you're the one who voted against me what is that so she's like, listen, ma'am, listen, ma'am. And Dina's like, don't call me ma'am, call me by my name. So then, <laughs> call me by your name. So then Kato, he's sitting there this whole time, and he wants to say something. He's got something to say. And Dina and Candy just keep talking over him. So Kato, he's getting frustrated, that cater. So he yells, can I just finish my thought? Give me 10 seconds. And after that, he's like, so do you remember when <laughs> he just gets right back into his normal voice and it was crazy. So then at some point Dina's saying that she wants to align with Candy and what makes any one person better than anyone else and I just don't know what the frig is happening at this point. So finally Candy feels the same way. She's had enough. She leaves the room. And Kato just starts chastising Dina again. He's like, blah, blah, blah. forget everything I told you, okay? Just don't tell anyone about this. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. So then Candy um, goes to the hotel bedroom. She's telling the other girls what just happened with Dina. And guess who busts in? It's Dina. So they're like telling the story together. They kind of get into it a little bit again. And Candy's telling Dina, look, you need to not let Kato put things in your head, okay? I was never against you, just relax. So they continue to hash things out. Ugh, Dina was such a sloppy mess, it was insane. I mean, this whole time we've seen this like sweet Dina and she's just always like, uh, I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> and it was just like not what we were expecting to see from her, right? Well, last night was like what I was expecting. It was crazy. So Kato, was listening to them talking at the door because he wanted to make sure that she wasn't, you know, spilling any secret recipes again. So after a while, Tom and Kato get Dina up to the HOH room. They need to get her away from everyone. <laughs> and they want to share some more info with her for whatever reason. I don't think this was a good idea. But um, they're telling her, you need to vote Candy out this week because then we can get Joey to come over to us and work with us. Nope, uh, because Joey last night was telling his new allies and buddies all about the conversation that he had with Tom earlier when Tom was spilling all of his alliance info. And they were like laughing about it and blah, blah, blah. So like Joey is with that other group. Um, but the best part of the night was when Tom and Dina were up in the HOH room. It was late. They see Ricky coming up the stairs on the spy screen. So Dina doesn't want to get caught in the HOH room. So she runs to the gym and gets on the elliptical. 
She's like still wearing her freaking pink ass cowgirl hat. So Ricky sees the door to the gym closed. Like he knows what's up. He knows that she just made a quick escape. So he goes in the gym and Dina's like, oh man, like I've been on the elliptical for 20 minutes and I just can't stop. I can't stop. So yeah, it was pretty wild. Ricky knew what was going on there. So anyway, <clears throat> that was just last night. This morning was, it was effing nuts. So this morning, Tom decides to pull Candy aside because he's going to expose Team Fun to her, tell her what's up. So he did his whole spiel like that we heard him share with Joey last night. And he tells Candy, you need to find out who has the power and get them to use it on you. And then I'll put up somebody from Team Fun. We'll get rid of one of those people and we'll see if we can like rebuild here. That's not how the power works, but he doesn't know that. And at this point, he is trying to figure out how to keep Candy around because he's realizing, like, whoa, we do not have Joey, so we're going to have to see if we can pull some strings here and get Candy to stay. So keep in mind, too, it is an even vote number week. There are, what, six people voting? So if they can get to three votes to force the tie, Tom will be breaking the tie. Okay, so <laughs> what the actual F is happening in this house. Lolo and Natalie were in the bathroom area this morning and Kato is like talk slash yelling to them from the kitchen and he's like, just so you guys know, like I'm gonna win the next HOH competition and lucky for you, like you're gonna be safe. And Natalie's like, um, what does that mean? Like why wouldn't I be safe? And Kato's like, if someone else got it. And Natalie is like, what are you talking about? What is going on here? And she's acting all confused. And Kato is like, did you ever go to an acting academy? <laughs> an acting academy? And Natalie's like, no, I have not. Like, have you? And he's like, yes, I have for many years. So then Natalie's asking him, did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? <laughs> Why are you being weird? And <clears throat> Kato's like, everything's fine. All is good. Nothing to worry about. Um... Okay, so then a few minutes later, Natalie is acting like she's going to go on the elliptical because she knew that Kato wanted to, so she's trying to be like so, a little bit spiteful here, but then she's talking to Kato and she's like, oh, I was just effing around because you were being an effing a-hole to me earlier, so Kato's like, I'm just being aware of life around me, and he brings up that he's upset that their group did not talk before the power veto ceremony yesterday. So he's like, just, I need to go do things. Like, go talk to Tom about it. So Natalie goes to the kitchen where Tom is, and she's like, Kato's upset. What's going on? So Tom is like, uh? He asks Kato, should we talk about this privately or in front of everyone? Well, guess what? <laughs> they start in front of everyone. So Kato brings up again that he's upset that they didn't talk before the power veto ceremony. And then Lolo starts to get heated. You know Lolo can, woo, zero to like a thousand in two seconds. She's in like Tesla mode. So she says, you could have come in and talked to us. I'm not for this bullshit. I'm not for this bullshit. She's like, do I need to spell it out for you? And Kato explodes. He turns into a volcano science project from middle school, he's like, have you ever taken an acting class? Have you ever taken an acting class? He's banging on the counter. They have like the counter between them. It's like Kato and then Lolo on the other side. And Lolo's like, I'm not an effing actor, you mother effer. I'm an athlete. So they are like yelling at each other and Kato's like, don't swear. <laughs> Just reminds me of that vibe where it's like, watch your profanity. <laughs> so <laughs> Lolo, I'm not going to do this all in yelling voice because I just can't, but Lolo is yelling about how Kato and Tom keep pissing everyone off and blowing everyone up and stuff, which is crazy because Lolo is always the one that's yelling, but she's like, one day it's Dina, then it's Candy, then it's us, like, what is this? You do this every day. You won the vetoes, you won HOHs, what do you want us to do? Bow down to you guys? So she says... You are making people who used to like you effing hate you guys. So then Tom's like, we know what you guys did. Oh my god, he's Kelsey from Bachelor! 
Was it Kelsey? I don't even remember. That was so long ago. So Lolo is like, you guys are pieces of shit for ruining everyone's effing morning. Whoa. Okay, so then Tamar is just like, ooh, this is so fun, 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 fun. You know she is just like ready to grab some grapes and watch this, sit back and watch this because she is not a part of it for once. So this is a whole mess. Tom and Kato, uh, after a little bit, go up to the gym where Natalie and Ricky are working out. And Tom is like, Ricky, I'm sure you know that I've been trying to backdoor you for the last two weeks. And Ricky's like, yep. And Tom's like, okay, well, I just wanted to get that out in the open so we don't have to do the whole fake thing. And Ricky's like, um, I wasn't being fake. Okay, like, yes, you were. You know you've been trolling these people. I know you try to be all, like, love and light, bitch, and, like, I'm not fake, I'm real. But, like, no, he is playing the same game that everyone else is, so don't. Okay, but anyway, <clears throat> Tom and Kato were scrapping with Natalie, Lolo, and Ricky on and off for a while. So I'm just going to give you guys some highlights because... Sometimes it's just like too much to say like everything that happened. So Lolo and Natalie were yelling at Tom at one point. It's actually, it's tough to say if it was both of them or just Lolo. Lolo was definitely in there, but I don't know if Natalie was because they weren't even on the feeds at this point. They had all four feeds on Candy and Dina talking, but you could hear Lolo and possibly Natalie yelling hardcore at Tom. And they're telling him that he's a terrible human being and he's a horrible male chauvinistic pig. Damn! Uh, I don't know about that. Like, I think we should keep it to game, right? Like, that's a lot. So, there was another time when Ricky was saying that he was trying to do yoga and Tom was stepping all over his mat with his dirty ass shoes. And he, like, told Tom and Kato to leave the gym. <sighs> that's a lot. But nothing compares to this other moment. Holy shit. So at one point, Ricky and Lolo are in the hotel bedroom. Kato knocks on the door, you know, to be polite. And then he walks in and Lolo's like, no, no, get out, Kato. I don't want to talk to you. And then she starts screaming for him to get out. She's like, Ricky, production, get Kato out of here. I don't want to talk to him. And she's like yelling this. Um, okay, this is not your house. Like, yes, you sleep in this room, but this is not your house. And her like yelling for Ricky and production to get him out of there is insane. It's like, mom, stop, tell him to stop looking at me. So Ricky goes over to the door where Kato is standing and he's like ushering him out. He's like, leave. You're not wanted. No one wants to listen to you. Damn, that is harsh. So cut the feeds, man. They cut the feeds. Um, but they weren't down that long. So things have calmed down <laughs> quite a bit. I mean, everybody's like hashing out everything that happened. There's a lot of crap talk going on. Needless to say, Tom and Kato are not in a very good position right now. Um, yeah, so like there's an eviction tomorrow. <laughs> Either Joey or Candy will be going. And at this point, it's, un it's hard to say what's going to happen here because Tamar did say before that she was on board to vote Candy out. But now Candy is trying to get Tamar's vote because that would make it a tie, assuming she still has Dina. Because if she has Dina, Kato, and Tamar, Tom will be able to keep her. And it seems like Tamar does not want to vote her out. But she's realizing, oh, if Candy stays, she's probably going to be with the other side, right? Because they saved her and she doesn't like that. But she, like, really does not want to vote Candy out because they've made such great strides with their relationship. She doesn't want to jeopardize that. So, like, I don't know what Tamar is going to do. It's going to be really interesting that it's all, like, depending on what she's going to do. So, woo, what do you guys think she's going to do? I honestly don't know at this point. Um, I don't know. But... I want to know from you guys also whose side are you on in all this I think there is blame on both sides like Tom and Kato are not wrong Natalie and Lolo were you know working against them um, before this all blew up like they had a reason to be paranoid but I don't blame Natalie and Lolo for wanting to jump ship when they saw how many times Tom was changing his mind and like wanting to go against Ricky and all that so you could say, I think both sides are to blame, but I will say 
that Lolo is very, very quick to start screaming at people and really escalating things. So yeah, it was a wild uh, day, night, last night, today, everything. So hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm gonna go eat my dinner and um, die. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. And until then, much love.